welcome back. So, we will continue with the mean field theory of the um, Ising model and as I said repeatedly in the mean field theory you have uh, the dimension enters to the coordination number gamma and uh, which is by and large generally uh, is a good 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 approximation there is no 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 problem with that. So, the thing that we have already done is that uh, the decomposition which is this construction of this table that um, this construction of this thing that we already read the up spins this is a plus and whenever I draw a line from one up spins only from the up spins to all the nearest neighbors. So, in a two up spins next to each other then there are two lines and that becomes uh, 2 n plus plus and those kind of things. Uh, and uh, for example, this is the uh, this is the condition that we derived that gamma n plus equal to 2 n plus 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 n plus minus. And these are the kind of relations that we just did at length. So, you know these are the things again. So, this is the book from Carson Huang and which is the best uh, um, this is from Carson Huang and this is the best uh, description of Ising model of the Klein mean field theory uh, of Bragg Williams approximation that I am talking here is done. This in the in this in this book of statistical mechanics. So, then uh, I uh, one important thing in this process going through that. Uh, so, this was the kind of things that we have been discussing uh, all this time that the writing down the Hamiltonian in terms of this what exactly I was telling before I do the mean field approximation. Then this is the partition function this is fairly universal notation you find everywhere in the world it is same every book will have this notation. So, that is a equivalence that means this the field of Ising model and mean field theories are fairly fairly well documented and well articulated uh, because this is a kind of so important that uh, we have to be more or less uh, in unison. Now, I just told you that uh, this uh, before I go to do the next step there is the, to show the importance of Ising model um, that this is applied to so many different things. One of them is the lattice gas. In the lattice gas you say ok I have a lattice where I have a if there is a gas molecule then there is not if there is a, so I want in a gas where a lot of empty spaces and I want to model that by saying ok if there is a particle then there is a black and there is no particle that is empty. So, that simple thing essentially is again n plus when there is a n plus goes over to your occupied n minus is gas particles but there is nothing there and the two next to each other is n plus minus if two occupied next to each other n plus plus. So, you can now map the Isaac model into lattice gas and you can do wonderful stuff. So, then again that as you said here total number of lattice sites total number of lattice sites then uh, then this total number of atoms are occupied. So, in this lattice when they are occupied they are occupied that is n plus plus when they are empty that is n minus and total number of nearest neighbor pairs is n plus plus. So, exactly that thing when you map that you can now get the and so if you say when they are next to each other there is an attraction and that attraction is epsilon then that gives you that. So, it is like two parallel spins have a ferromagnetic interaction and then I can write the partition function, I can write the partition function like that. And then I can now get the exactly decompose into this only difference is that the beta h term here is given by this term. But again I have to evaluate the same thing 
g n plus n plus plus and e to the power beta h n plus n plus plus that is this thing. So, I am done. So, one then number of ways of distributing atoms n plus atoms n plus atoms into the n a number of lattice sites. Now, something extremely important comes out of that. Then if my number of atoms occupied atoms my black dots or my here white dots if that is equal to n plus then I know n plus and minus n minus gives me the magnetization and what does n plus gives me here n plus gives me density. So, then I immediately have a wonderful isomorphism which is goes a long way that magnetization is equivalent to density that exactly correct turned out to be that is the way we can uh, transform one equation state of magnetic system into equation state for the gas liquid system this is a far reaching consequence. So, now we, we now just discuss that how lattice gas model can be mapped into Ising model. We will next dis discuss uh, one more interesting thing and that is these are all from Carson Huang. Now, the binary alloy, binary alloy lead um, uh, brass, beta brass, beta brass and that is um, zinc and copper and then uh, I am now occupied, uh, my lattice sites are occupied either by a zinc atom. I can now consider order disorder transition that takes place at 742 Kelvin in this case, that you can immediately see that my up spin could be copper, my down spins are uh, mm, uh, zinc or other way around and I can again write down a Hamiltonian. So, sure enough, I write down a Hamiltonian exactly same way. I now say okay, my copper copper is energy interaction energy epsilon 1, uh, sorry uh, epsilon 1, my uh, copper uh, and zinc zinc this is thing and if I want copper zinc then like that. So, this kind of binary binary mixture we are talking binary alloy that like they cop add copper and copper like each other and zinc and zinc like each other low temperature of course here there is more long range interactions because of the metallicity and all those things. But at a level high temperature when you are talking order disorder transition those things, but you have to say copper and copper like each other and zinc and zinc like each other very much like a binary mixture that we do and we will we'll talk little bit about that later. So, now I exactly have the same conservation rules that means I start with the 5, um, here these 3 numbers n11, n22 and n12 and then I have the conditions just I have done before exactly same that up spin, up spin, now copper and copper, down spin, down spin, zinc and zinc and copper and zinc and 1, 2 and copper plus zinc is total number of lattice sites and and then I eliminate and I now get my energy or Hamiltonian, I get energy Hamiltonian in terms of their n plus plus n plus minus I get n1 and n1 that means n1 is number of uh, lattice sites occupied by copper or zinc whatever and n11 when copper and copper are nearest neighbors. So, these things these things then exactly same what I have reduced to exactly same that uh, my Ising model. So, now I showed two cases gas liquid transition and binary alloy which are completely isomorphic to and that in one shot explained beautiful many things. For example, if I do binary mixture I give you just one example before I pass on against density then this is what gas liquid transition and this is the critical temperature you see. Now, if I now do that with the mole fraction x of one species is exactly same graph. 
this is exactly same when I plot magnetization against temperature because I already told you density is like magnetization. So, in one shot in one formulation you are getting three very vastly different phenomena which is the magnetization, the gas liquid transition and disorder order disorder transition and phase separation in binary alloys. This is just amazing that is why one takes the Ising model so seriously both in statics equilibrium properties and testing and our language of phase transition is completely dependent on Ising model. This is the most important system of statistical in the statistical mechanics ok. We can let us continue and this I was saying this is the magnetic transition magnetic transition uh, that is happening magnetization against temperature this is this is same as uh, this is same as I can instead of that I can plot it rho versus t and exactly same thing. So, this is the classic critical point when a magnetic system. So, order disorder transition mole fraction all these things are the same this is one of the most huge huge success of of the a, um, of the Ising model. So, now we go ahead and we complete our task of the uh, of the mean field theory and that will be now little bit uh, a. So, the way we do now is uh, this is order disorder transition that done in I do not need to do that, but what instead I will do what I was continuing with uh, ok. So, now the mean field theory is same uh, the way I am the, the, the level I am doing is uh, is uh, is back Williams approximation and uh, and this is thing and I need to make it little bit fatter. Now, uh, so, this is I introduced long range order parameter and short range order parameter L sigma and plus 1 and these are the same thing and now I make the approximation that uh, short range order parameter is is is, uh, is given by long range order parameter. So, the approximation is contained in the statement that there is no long short range order apart from the long range order that means approximation states that uh, statement that no short range order other than long range order and once I do that um, I do this then I get in when I make n plus plus by half gamma n equal to n plus squares that translates into sigma because this is nothing but L, 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 but uh, uh, the L plus you know N plus by N equal to uh, half L plus 1 square remember that uh, half L plus 1 sorry uh, and when I use that into here I get this condition that sigma when I use this into uh, 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 I in this into that then I get uh, this condition sigma L plus 1. Now, that essentially means that I have the Hamiltonian now completely in, in Carson Huang H is my D. So, my Hamiltonian is then 1 over n what is energy? 1 over h is half minus half gamma j l square minus b l. So, just make an uh, 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 note that uh, his h is my b and uh, his uh, gamma my gamma, but his epsilon is my j. This notation I am using a little bit more modern like we use j for Ising model not epsilon as Kass and Huang have used and we do we do like to use Hamiltonian H 
but not E. As I use Hamiltonian for H, that deprives me of H for magnetic field. So I use B, but B equal to H mu. So this there is no room for any confusion here. Once I do that, then I write now. Now I am in a completely free domain. Now I know how to go. I know the how many ways I can get n plus up spins in n, and that of course is n factorial by n plus factorial n minus n factorial. So, that is I have written here and n plus is half n 1 plus l, the other is n 1 minus l. So, I can write n factorial by, uh, uh, by n plus factorial n minus factorial, then that is the way or n factorial to n plus. So, that is the way I have written here, uh, that is I have written there, this is the number of ways to distribute. And for a given configuration with L, because I started with n plus and n plus plus, that was the exact. Then I replay, I made this approximation, mean field approximation, and as a result of mean field approximation, I have a, on the n plus. Then I go back. I, I uh, already have L and uh, sigma, and when I eliminate n plus plus, I eliminate sigma. I have only L, but in a consistent way, in a consistent way. So I have the Hamiltonian. And then I know how to. So I put the Hamiltonian here, and lo and behold, I have fully. Now I can evaluate that. So the in the large particle limit n going to infinity, I take the logarithm to get the free energy, and then I make the approximation. I take I make the Stirling's approximation. Just we what we have done in Mayer's theory, we have done in the canonical partition function. Again and again, we have picked up the maximum term. So of the sum, I pick up the maximum term. Yeah, so, I this remove that one, I take the log whatever remain and then I maximize with respect to L and maximizing with respect to L is same as maximizing with respect to N plus right. So, remember if you know already have not noticed note that L is nothing but the magnetic essentially the magnetization of the system. And so, things are well and good. So, uh, then we can go and uh, once we do that, then the, uh, the thing that happens is that I get an equation which is the following that uh, uh, okay. I get an equation by doing that which is let me write down because it is not very visible here uh, L equal to tan hyperbolic. So, that is the, so this is called a implicit solution or a transcendental equation where I have a uh, L on the left hand side, I have A L on the right hand side and given a B, I have to solve that numerically. Now, if B is 0, the magnetic external magnetic field is 0, I have this beautiful solution which is this one. That means, L equal to tan hyperbolic in many places dimension k is introduced which is j by k b t then i a equal to tan hyperbolic k gamma l. Lo and behold this has a beautiful phase transition scenario that when we, so and this is given here, this uh, phase transition scenario is described beautifully here that when this has only solution of this equation is, only solution of this equation is, uh, only solution is that is at when temperature is high. So, gamma j by k b t is less than 1, then all even less than 1, only solution is L average, which is the maximum term. Actually, I prefer it L star, but that okay, L average that only solution is the magnetization is 0. So, this is a random system. 
number of plus spin, spins up spins is same as number of down spins. However, a solution appears when you get uh, a solution appears when you go to lower temperature. So, when you go to lower temperature that means gamma j by k b t is greater than 1 temperature is small. So, this becomes greater than 1 then a solution appears actually two solution appears one of them up for up spins and that is for down spins. And you get the one can show that this root that uh, 0 must be it, is, it, it corresponds to a minimum not to a maximum. So, you can uh, neglect reject that term. So, then then the solution reduces to the following things that L these two solutions to T greater than T c you have no magnetization disordered system below T c it can be either plus or minus it has to be 2 you cannot in the absence of magnetic field they are both are equally likely there is no way to choose one of the other. The way the solution is made by doing a graphical method which is meant uh, which is uh, shown here you the graphical solution is done in the following way that you plot L and tan hyperbolic L and then you when they become equal to 1 then that is the solution and the graph goes like this, this uh, ok it, it crosses here at 1 and crosses here at 1. So, these are the two solutions that you get and it is a uh, mm, let me see if I can get it a little bit up there should be something here a cursor ok. So, this is the uh, this line is the going selecting you when that become equal to tan hyperbolic and L. So, this is the L versus L this line L line this this straight line and this is the tan hyperbolic you know the tan hyperbolic very well because tan hyperbolic are like this right and uh, these are the solutions when they meet when they meet that is the solution of that and that is L naught plus and minus um, uh, solutions ok. So, this is part of these things works out beautifully. So, next go to the next page. So, one beautiful thing of that is the following of all these calculations is the following that in general can be it can be obtained numerically and one finds numerically some very interesting thing comes out that near the temp critical temperature when you are close to T c close to T c is a subject of great great interest because of the what is called the critical phenomena. And we have done Landau theory of the critical phenomena uh, somewhat. Then you find that numerically that this approximation that L naught behaves is like that when you are away from the critical point, but when you are very in a region close to critical point then the order parameter or magnetization behaves as magnetization behaves as T c minus T to the power half. This is that means, the magnetization varies sharply as a fractional exponent and this exponent is called uh, in a critical phenomena magnetic is called exponent beta one is sorry to use the same beta many many different ways this is the equation of state also this is the same way rho varies as again T c minus T also the not notation beta. In uh, mean field theory, Landau theory, Bragg Williams theory all these cases this exponent beta is half which experimentally found to be wrong, experimentally one found yes there is a fractional exponent and uh, the basic thing is correct that they this is very singular behavior it shows uh, 
near the critical phenomena, but this exponent is more like one third. So, this is called equation of state uh, exponent and as I told you magnetization is same as density in order disorder transition again the probability of one uh, being occupied by copper magnetization or you can say composition you know uh, of one minus other uh, density of A minus density of B uh, copper minus density of the zinc is exactly same thing. So, all now it need not be strictly one third it will varies from 0 0.36 to 0 0.31 and all these things, but it is initially very very similar. So, this is the essence of the critical phenomena and the critical exponents and the critical exponents in many different forms, but this magnetization and density specifically it also has a critical behavior that we will be discussing a little bit here. So, so now here the thermodynamic functions are summarized for this. So, this is the magnetization uh, the L naught and so this is the uh, free energy and then you get the as I said magnetization this is the internal energy and this is the specific heat that goes like that and uh, that behaves in the following fashion. It in this case it does not. Uh, so, uh, specific in the Bragg Williams approximation uh, does not diverge, but it increases like that. So, this gamma j I increase the I in I increase the uh, this is gamma my gamma j as I increase uh, as I increase the temperature um, k b t and it goes and saturates to a value like that it increases like that. And uh, then similarly one can go to that is gas this this property comes from the uh, this solution comes from this solution here this thing you can figure it out. So, that we just described in the previous page similar behavior you get in the that is gas very similar equations that uh, table of correspondence is given and this is uh, just exactly the same uh, one model maps into the other model predictions are exactly the same. Same will be binary alloy. So, now this is what it is this uh, beautiful thing given here that I have been referring to all this time that uh, this is the gas liquid all of you know van der Waals that pressure versus volume, pressure versus volume all you know this isotherm and this is the critical point and this is the invert, invert, uh, inverse parabola that I was drawing as density versus uh, density versus temperature. So, if I plot against temperature I get that the top is the critical point and uh, the lattice gas equation of state in the lattice gas and same in the this is the mean field theory or simplest type of mean field theory Black Williams approximation not too simple as we have seen, but it captures some aspects of the critical phenomena but does not aspect the full, the full aspect of critical phenomena which requires far more work and uh, the same thing you get from van der Waals, the same thing you get from uh, uh, Landau theory and you need to do lot more work to go, go beyond this level of approximation. So, next one level one does better with considerable more work is the uh, is the Bethe approximation, but we are not going to do that. So, we will uh, we will stop here as for mean field theory goes. So, what did we achieve? We got a beautiful equation L average or L in the in the in the we also got a equation similar equation in the presence of the magnetic field which is a little bit more complex not too much, 
and uh, both has to be solved numerically, but in some cases as we showed that one can do after doing the numerical the work there are some analytical work one can do and one get the mitigation as a function of temperature in a critical exponent beta equal to half which is we call mean field exponent and uh, and uh, that does not do a good job, but what is the beauty of the whole thing is that it does describe the phase transition. It does capture many many aspects of phase transition of three systems which is magnetic, gas liquid, then binary alloy, order disorder transition in binary alloy. All the three, so it shows that these three systems to certain level is isomorphic and this was further in a beautiful paper that I uh, uh, recommend people to study by Young and the Nineteen fifty two in physical review, he further puts this analogy between Ising and uh, lattice gas and binary alloy. Actually, some of these things follows what we have done, follows from this classic paper. Yang and then you know these two gentlemen got the Nobel Prize for uh, work their work on parity, but in nineteen fifty two they wrote two physical review papers one after another where they mapped the Mayer's theories. So, they connected the Ising model with Mayer's theory and they showed that the cluster integrals that we do in Mayer's theory are can be expressed in terms of zeros of the grand canonical partition function and uh, huge number of results were done together and all these beautiful themes of Ising model, binary alloy all these things were put together uh, in, in, in an epoch making uh, paper uh, of uh, in, in these two papers uh, and uh, you know what level mean field theory working, what level not working. So, that uh, along with Mayer's theory and uh, Ising model, Young Lee, to those two papers played essentially the starting point or say launching point at, at sometimes often told to our study of the phase transitions and critical point. So, we might come return later to the critical phenomena and a little bit more. Uh, we already have done the Landau theory uh, and uh, we have done the concept of order parameter and you see here already that in the free energy then ultimately described in terms of a L square term and L is the magnetization and Landau theory order parameter is the magnetization. So, Landau theory's expansion of free energy in terms of L square L4 is fully consistent with the Bragg Williams or other way around though Bragg Williams has a microscopic basis. It starts with a Hamiltonian, but Landau just writes down the free energy expansion. So, it is quite satisfying to see that the Landau theory is recovered in a more consistent theoretical framework. And uh, so, the concept of order parameter that we introduced in Landau theory which is same as the long range order parameter L which is same as the magnetization, which is same as the density, which is same as the mole fraction. So, Bragg Williams approximation gives us a beautiful understanding of the free energy that is happening, the flattening of the free energy surface all these things comes out of the Bragg Williams. What is phenologically assumed largely on symmetry arguments and the basic basic uh, physics by Landau. Okay, so, we will stop here now. Uh, we will probably get to use Li and Yang again uh, and we will get to use Ising model again 
in future course. Okay, we stop here now. Thank you.